Today we're taking a look at hemostatic gauze. We're going to talk about the different types of gauze available on the market, and we're also going to talk about some myths that still seem to be floating around out there. Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be taking a look at some hemostatic gauze today. I've got several different types here in front of me and we're going to look at some of the differences. I've been asked before what the differences are, which ones you should have, which ones work better. Um, and I'm going to answer as many of those questions as I can, although the ultimate um, answer of which one is better is really yet to be determined and there's not a lot of good documentation that really specifically says which one of these is going to be better um, in a given circumstance. And then at the end of the video we'll talk about some common myths that still seem to be floating around about hemostatic gauze and hemostatic agents for bleeding control. So before we jump into the different types of gauze let me do a quick overview of how your body clots off. So when you have a break in a blood vessel, and now we have bleeding, the blood has a bunch of things in it that will help to automatically stop that bleeding. So there are platelets, and think of platelets like building blocks. They are the two by fours or wooden posts and structures of a house. So you have these platelets, but they have to be bound together um, in some form or fashion. But if we have these platelets and all this stuff that binds those platelets together in our blood already, why do we not have constant clots happening inside our system? Well, there is a series of events that happens when there is damage to a vessel wall. Not only does that series of events lead to all these things coming together to make a clot, but after that clot has formed and healing has taken place, it actually starts a process to break that clot back down so we don't have clots still in our system where there was damage to a vessel wall at one time. So this is a pretty intricate and detailed process of all these things that have to happen, but we're gonna keep it in pretty simple terms today. In the future, we'll do a video that really dives into the clotting cascade and explains these things in a bit more detail, but today we're keeping it pretty surface level so we know how it applies to some of this gauze that we have in front of us. So as we have a tear in a vessel wall and the body starts to recognize that, it starts a couple different processes for starting to build that clot. And in the clotting cascade, we have two different pathways that we can talk about, intrinsic and extrinsic. And that just means whether or not the things that are happening are happening inside the blood or the things that are happening are happening outside the blood, like in the surrounding cells and tissues nearby that injury. In the clotting cascade, there's a bunch of different factors, anywhere from factor one to factor 13. But the one that we want to know about right now is factor 12 really factor 12 kicks off this process called the clotting cascade where there's a whole bunch of different factors. Without getting too detailed, these factors start this whole cascading process and by the end of that we get a clot. But if we don't have any of the stuff we need along the way or we skip one of these processes, we won't end up getting that clot. The extrinsic pathway are some chemicals released by surrounding cells that then also tell the body to do certain things. And so that the surrounding cells that have been damaged nearby where the vessel is now also add to that clot as well. So there's these two pathways, they all come together, they form a clot. After the clot's been there a while, the body breaks down that clot once that vessel wall is repaired. And that's how our body goes about repairing these breaks in the vessel walls. All right, so that was a bunch of complicated information about the clotting cascade and a bunch of detailed stuff that doesn't really seem like it's relevant yet. But that'll be a lot more relevant here in a minute. So let's take a look at the gauze that we have in front of us. First off, I have some very simple wound packing gauze by North American Rescue. This is a dense gauze. It's Z folded, so it's folded back on itself. So I can hold this in my hand, pull it off, and it just plays out of one side very easily. And this is designed to be used to pack a wound where you have an arterial bleed or severe hemorrhage. We pack that wound, we put a pressure dressing on top and hold that pressure in place. This also has a blue line that runs down it. This allows it to be visible on x-ray so that when there is imaging done of the damage, they can easily see this and identify it. And before they stitch up and close up a wound, they can check to make sure that they've gotten all that gauze out of that wound. Now let's step it up from this basic gauze. We take this gauze and let's say we 
impregnate something into this gauze and that something that we've put in here now actually speeds up that clotting process. So we use it the same way, but now we have an extra agent working for us to help speed up the clotting process that may have originally taken longer with just regular gauze. That's where our hemostatic agents come in. Let's talk first about combat gauze. <clears throat> so this is combat gauze made by Quick Clot. They had an older version that was just granules. You would pour it in the wound, react with the blood, and then hopefully create a clot. Well, this is much better for a multitude of reasons, but this has that same substance embedded or impregnated in the gauze. So it's gauze that looks very similar to this. It even has the radio opaque line that runs through the quick clot as well, but it has a inorganic substance called kaolin. It is a naturally occurring substance. It's a, like a clay that they have put inside this gauze. Now what this does is this actually promotes factor 12 in your clotting cascade. So this helps speed up the clotting process, promoting factor 12 and causing a quicker chain of reaction in that clotting cascade rather than simply relying on the body's initiation of that clotting cascade. So this helps to speed up that process and then by having that same pressure at the wound, we're helping to occlude the area, but now we've also started to stimulate that clotting cascade. So in short, this is working to amplify and speed up the process that the blood already has inside of itself to be able to promote clotting through the intrinsic pathways. This is also made here in the USA, um, so that's something to take in consideration as well. C-O-T-Triple-C currently has this as the recommended hemostat of choice in the TCCC guidelines. They do allow for some of the other hemostatic agents to be used as a secondary, um, but their recommendation, specifically for military use, is the quick clot combat cause. You'll find this in the black package. Uh, they also have a military green package. There's a white package for civilians. So it's packaged a lot of different ways, but it's all essentially the same stuff. At Six Echo, the quick clot combat gauze is what we are using in our kits. So if you get the Maverick Adventure Kit, it'll come standard with the quick clot. If you get a kicker ankle kit from us um, as a discreet way to carry medical and trauma supplies. If you buy it fully stocked, we will throw the combat gauze in there um, and that is our go-to. We also put that in our Minuteman, which is a great vehicle kit. Um, but again, we have that quick clot combat gauze as our hemostatic of choice and it is still the recommended and primary hemostatic agent for the TCCC. So next up, one of the other popular hemostatic agents out there is Celox gauze. So this Celox gauze is also gauze that is Z folded. So the gauze in the Celox actually tends to be a little bit stiffer. So it's a little bit different makeup of the actual gauze itself than something like the uh, combat gauze. Celox is a gauze that is impregnated with something that something happens to be chitosan. So this chitosan is pulled from a shrimp a specific type of shrimp shell. So it's from a shellfish and that substance promotes clotting, but it doesn't do anything with the clotting cascade in the body. So the body starts its process of clotting. Meanwhile, if you wound pack with this outside of a damaged vessel, this is almost like making jello. So now you're taking whatever's in here, once mixed with liquid, it will form a gel plug that now acts like its own clot completely outside of the normal clotting cascade that your body has. Some people have said that this may be better for people with uh, bleeding disorders or the people that are on blood thinners that already may have an issue with the body's normal response to bleeding and clotting, whereas this is simply just mixing a bunch of jello on top of the wound, letting it harden up, and doesn't harden, but it turns into a gel form. Um, and then you can continue to pack gauze on top, pressure dressing, and help hold that in place. So this Celox acts completely separate from the body's clotting cascade. Um, and so there are arguments whether or not having something acting outside of the body's clotting cascade or having something that promotes and accelerates what the body's already naturally doing. Which one is better? There's a bunch of arguments for one versus the other. Um, again, TCCC still recommends the combat gauze as the number one, this as a backup, but you'll find people that would argue 
on both sides of the fence there. So that's where there's not a bunch of data that says one promotes life more than the other or one stops bleeding faster than the other. There are some studies they've done on how effective these are. They have found that both of these are effective to help stop bleeding in whatever uh, subset of patients that they were used on. And bleeding does stop faster when you're using a hemostatic agent versus simply gauze. Um, but some of the studies have not shown that using a hemostatic actually helps uh, keep a patient alive or changes the mortality rate versus regular gauze. So this may stop the bleeding faster, but if this still stops bleeding altogether, which one is better to have? Now, there's a lot to be said for having a hemostatic agent versus regular gauze, but these are significantly more expensive and about the $40 to $50 range each versus somewhere around $5 for these. If you're finding any of this information, this video helpful, leave us a like on this video. If you have any questions over anything or any comments to even add to this discussion, leave us a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and make sure your notifications are on so you're alerted to future content. So there's several other types of hemostatic agent out there or several different brands, I should say. Um, this Hemcon Chido Gauze is another one, but again, it's just using the same Chidazan from Celox. And there are several different variations of gauze out there that's impregnated with this chitosan. Again, works the same way. It's external to the body's clotting cascade. It works to create a gel-like plug on the outside of the vessel. And then with the extra wound packing and pressure dressings, it holds that plug in place to help stop the bleeding process. Now, a couple myths that have been out there on any or all of these. One is that doing this is painful and burns. Well, it is true that wound packing a wound is painful. Now, it could save a life, so it's worth the pain, but any time that you have damaged tissue and you're poking your fingers down in it, it is gonna be painful. Tourniquet application is painful. Where that statement is actually a myth, though, is when it talks about it burning. There used to be granules that would be poured into a wound where there was active bleeding. These granules would have an exothermic reaction, which would give off heat, which would start to burn surrounding tissue. It would make the person that was already in pain in more pain. And this was overall not that great of an idea. Um, it did stop the bleeding and form some of those clots, but there were also a lot of side effects that came from that. Now they have changed that up. They've put stuff inside of gauze so you can actually pull the whole gauze out when you get to surgery rather than having to debride that entire wound and try to get all those granules and things out. Those granules also would blow in the wind and so inside of helicopters it would get inside people's eyes. Um, in wind it would blow out of the wound so just pouring a powder inside a wound was not necessarily the best option and they've come up with much better options out on the market for that now. One other myth that seems to be out there is people say you cannot use chitosan or any form of shellfish derived materials in someone that is allergic to shellfish. As of my last research, there were no documented cases of someone having an allergic reaction to a gauze that was allergic to shellfish. So while that could still, I guess, be a potential issue, um, there are no documented cases of it and manufacturers even recommending, and manufacturers are not stating that they should be used in care or caution or withheld from people that have a shellfish allergy. If you're bleeding out and you have a severe arterial bleed, I think at that point, the most critical thing to address is the bleeding, in which case we'll pack these and we'll deal with an allergic reaction or um, sensitivities after the fact. All right, so that is an overview of some of the hemostatic agents out there on the market. Again, these are used for wound packing for severe hemorrhage or arterial bleeds. Uh, pack them in the wound, apply a pressure dressing on top, hold firm pressure for five to 10 minutes, depending on what manufacturer's recommendations are based on the one that you have. So get familiar with what the manufacturer recommends for what you're carrying. Um, you can keep up with the expiration dates on these as well. Do these products actually expire the day they say they do based on the printed date on the back of them? I'll let you figure that one out. They're vacuum sealed, they're good to go. You also have the option for regular wound packing gauze. So if you can't afford $45 or so for one of these, this is a great alternative, much cheaper. Doesn't have an expiration date on this specific one, but you can still wound pack. It still has the 
radio opaque line. Um, it just doesn't have that hemostatic agent inside. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Hope that this helped to explain some of the differences between the hemostatic agents that are out there on the market and hopefully dispel some myths that may be um, a reason why you haven't carried it or a reservation you may have about it. These will help speed up the cladding process and a great tool to have um, if it's in your budget to add to your kit. If you buy kits from us, the quick clot is what comes standard in there. Uh, so you'll already find these in some of our stocked kits if that is what you choose to carry with you. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.